I know you can do it, buddy. I know you can do it. No, no. He says, that's where your hand went. Good boy. Good boy. Hey guys, Ethan here with Standing Stone Kennels and we are back with another Sprig training series training video. We are talking all about crate training today. Now there's a couple different things that we need to discuss to begin with. First of all, crate training is extremely important, but there's a lot of different ways that you can look at that term and what it actually means. So for our dogs, it's not like we're now magically starting to work on crate training with him. The reason that we've incorporated this in this stage of his training now is because he's ready to start being introduced to the cue itself to learn how to go into his crate. Up until this point, we've more or less helped him into the crate and that's it. There's no expectation that I can say from across the room, go into your kennel and stay there. So that'll be what we're teaching today. But first we want to cover why crate training is important a couple things that people struggle with maybe, and then how to work through those. As well as, for those of you that we lose after 30 seconds, we're giving one of these bad boys away. You lucky ducks, this is the lucky kennel. And because you're watching this video, you have an opportunity to win this kennel and their new mat that comes in the kennel to give your dog a not only safe spot to stay, but also a very comfortable place to lay. So. To begin with, we talk about why crate training is important. Let's face it, dogs being in crates keeps your stuff safer when you're gone and the puppy safer. That's both traveling and um, just when you're at home. Now, to begin at the very beginning steps of crate training, we need to have an understanding of what size of crate that the dog needs. You need a puppy, appropriate sized crate to begin with and then you're going to grow the crate size as the dog grows. So again, I don't have specific ages or dates or um, to the hour of which you know who you guys are of when you need to change the crates but you need to be able to tell that your puppy is able to go in, lay down, stand up but not have excessive amounts of room. Don't go on buying it and going big or going home and getting the largest crate you can find and saying the dog will grow into it. If you do that, they're going to pee and poop in one end of the kennel and then sleep in the other. And that's going to cause lots of issues with not only your house training, but your crate training. So get a size appropriate crate. Now, Sprig has graduated through multiple different sizes. You can, um, in the beginning stages, go to Walmart, Target, pet stores, get those uh, less expensive clamshell crates. They're gonna work great. But when you start considering traveling with your dog in the crate, you can look on the internet, you can find how those clamshell um, cheaper crates actually do in accidents. We all know how important our dogs are to us. So protecting them while you're on the road involves putting them in a safe place. It's also, you know, some of us allow the dogs to ride in the cab with us. You got to think about just allowing, you know, how important seatbelts are to us. Um, crates kind of help keep those dogs safe. If you have a quality heavy duty crate, the dog may be banged up a little bit, but ultimately they're going to be fine. Rather, not in the crate, when they're not in the crate, excuse me, they may end up getting thrown from the vehicle or even worse, something um, that we don't need to really talk about anymore. But size is appropriate and then also quality is appropriate when you plan on traveling um, we saw these guys come out they are super super nice crates you've got durability i mean you can stand on this sucker it's got handles to pick it up and load it tie down straps all of the things that make um, durability and easy usability um, for travel with your dog now we've talked about size sprig is getting bigger so we are able to upgrade him to this guy and he'll be able to stay in this crate for quite some time, um, almost through maturity uh, with him. He should be a medium sized dog. He's not gonna be huge. And this is gonna be a great size for him. He's ready for it. Now, some puppies at 16 weeks, like Sprig is now, are not gonna be ready for quite this size of kennel. It all depends on your dog's level of cleanliness and how they're doing through this process. Sprig's been super clean, so we've been able to upgrade him 
to a larger size, giving him a little more room. Now, if we took a step back, started to have an accident or two, um, we'd have to evaluate maybe we need that smaller crate still, but we need to have realistic expectations. So when you are with your dog, you cannot say, I need you to stay in this crate for 10 hours and not have an accident when they're little itty bitty puppies. You know, we all have jobs, but you signed up for getting a puppy. So make the arrangements, figure out how to take your lunch or get a friend to be able to let your young puppies out so that they can go to the bathroom midday at a minimum. They need to go to the bathroom. We need to have realistic expectations for them to be successful. So we've talked about the importance of size and durability as well as having realistic expectations of what they can be expected to do. And then the next thing is a lot of people and mostly the last thing that we're going to talk about about crate training is um, we hear a lot about anxiety issues. My dog hates the crate. My dog hates when I leave. And then we start breaking, breaking that down. And when do they go in the crate? Well, they just go in the crate when I leave. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I think people make. They want to spend all of the time with them while they're home which is good. Dogs need out time, they need exercise, they need structured training, they need free play time, but they also need crate time. They need to understand that that is a safe place and that is a good place to be while you're there and while you're away. Again, with realistic expectations and making sure that you are putting enough time into training and development and exercise to keep their brains and their bodies in good condition. So, now that we've talked about this, we're going to start teaching Sprig how to go into the kennel on cue. Good boy. Now this kennel is pretty cool. This door um, actually is gonna come all the way off, which is gonna make the introduction to this process easier. There's a couple little clips right in here. And then it's spring loaded, so you can pull that off. Now, why is that gonna make it easier? Because it's not gonna open and close while we're trying to teach him how to go into the kennel. Now, if you've been watching along with Sprig's progress, you've seen uh, we do a lot of his training sessions with his meals and the beginning of his sessions, I talked about this, he's almost frantically working, not really listening to what I'm saying, just trying to figure out how to get food. So we actually started today's session with feeding him half of his meal before we began filming. Now, he is focused but drastically less frantic. So it's it, sometimes you've got to take a look at your session and see what the dog's doing and how you can make it better for them and giving them better opportunities to learn. So we're gonna start this by warming him up just a little bit. Good job. There's a target. Sit. Good boy. Good. Here. Good. Good. We've got his focus. Now, we're going to move toward the crate and we're gonna figure out what the best way is to help introduce him to movement toward. Okay, now I took advantage of that. That little hand movement that I made almost inadvertently got him to move toward the crate and I marked that. You can mark positive reinforcement training. Um, you can use your clicker to mark stages of a new behavior they're learning. I marked him getting near the front of the door So again, we saw that same thing. Now, up until this point, we've been crate training him. We talked about that, but I haven't had an expectation of him going in on cue or going in on his own. All we've done is grabbed him by the collar, helped lead him into the kennel, and then closed the door. That is um, a good start. He's pretty good at going in, and if I were to grab his collar and lead him, he wouldn't fight me, he'd go in. But I want him to start to develop this behavior of Good. Now, I don't know how well exactly you guys can see that, but I've marked, the first time I marked, he put one paw inside the kennel. This is how powerful this tool is. Now, he's tried it twice. So, he's just figured out now that marking, that putting his feet right in the opening, then he turns and looks to me. So, we've taught him that that is the first step of going into the kennel. A little bit of body movement, hand gestures. Good, can help. Now what I see is going to be a struggle already is he wants to keep eye contact with me and focus on where that treat's coming from. So going all the way in is gonna be a bigger commitment for him. We're getting pretty close to that. 
Good. Now, to explain exactly what happened there, he put those front paws in and I held the click and then he tried again. What do I need to do? Try harder doing that. And welcome back guys. The uh, camera had a little technical difficulties, battery died. So we are back with you and we're gonna continue this on. So right before we cut off, he learned, he's learned now that putting his paws in, we were marking that, marking that, marking that, and we got about five, six reps. And then he went to do it and I didn't mark it. And he went, I need to try harder which is what that positive reinforcement training can do. It can develop a dog that really likes to learn and likes to train. And he said, how do I figure this out? Because I know it has something to do with this kennel. So he made it more of a way in and I marked that process of him moving in. So we're gonna show that again. A little bit of gestures, body gestures from me. Movement toward the crate is helping him. So we're gonna continue to do that. Good. Lost just a little bit of momentum, but I think we can get it back here pretty quick. So that was that halfway in, halfway out thing. So we're gonna mark that. Like I said, we lost a little bit of momentum and we're gonna regain that here just by marking a couple, just by marking a couple times. So marked as soon as his feet hit the pad and we'll get him moving that direction. Good. Come on. Good. There we go. Good. Starting to move that direction. Good. Come on, get all the way in there. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I know you can do it, buddy. I know you can do it. No, no. He says, that's where your hand went. Good boy. Good boy. We're going to give him a little bit of a jackpot. A few more kibble there. Something that said, um, you heard a little more verbal out of me. I don't do a whole lot of that, but that was exciting. So, Ooh. hairball. Right here, bud. There it is. Good. His feet moving. Good job. He still wants to keep focus on me. Come on. There you go. Good. Another whole handful. Show him that was really good. That's what we wanted. Good. Maybe all the way in there. Good job. Let's see if we can get a couple more reps. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now, this is what the next stage would be. Good. Now that he's pretty consistently understanding. All the way in is how we're getting rewarded. Kennel, we can start to incorporate that cue. Now you've already heard us use the cue, kennel for place. Good job. Kennel, good boy. You've already heard us use that cue. Dogs are placed and situationally oriented and can figure out very quickly that kennel means any place that we want them to go. Good job. So it's okay if that means load into the truck. It's okay if it means to go into the crate. It can be to go onto a dog bed. And what it's going to do for us is simplify the amount of vocabulary that we have to use when communicating with our dogs. Now, if you have the truck, good. If you have the truck, the dog bed, the dog box, all of the things next to each other and you say kennel, he's going to pick one. That's going to be the one situation where things can get a little bit confusing. But... How often is that the case? So, kennel can be used, simplifies our vocabulary, makes it easy for them. Now, everybody that is watching, we have uh, this awesome Lucky Duck brand kennel to give away with one of their pads. 
right here that's removable. This thing is super durable. I'm gonna tell you right now, we have used a lot of different pads that are designed to go in crates and everything gets destroyed. This one is um, outlasting by about five, 600% over every pad that we have ever used before. We're gonna continue to test, but so far it's awesome. The average pad lasts one of our dogs about two, maybe three hours. And this thing is killing it. We're going on a week of use with this thing. Um, multiple dogs have stayed in it. Everybody seems to be comfortable as well as not destroying it. So crate for you, pad for you, if you can follow simple directions. We need exposure for the people that wanna give this stuff away. And that involves you liking, following our page, liking, following their page, important. Then share this post. It's gonna help to build more exposure so that more people can see what's going on, as well as show the people that are giving this away to you how valuable these giveaways and these videos can be. Finally, tag a friend, share the love so that they get the same opportunity to try and win, and we will be giving this away shortly. The instructions will be posted. Again, follow them for your chance to win and subscribe on our YouTube channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of our upcoming Sprig videos and giveaways. Thanks guys. Thank you.